Hello and welcome to my tutorial on making animations with Disco Diffusion. This will be part two of the series and this tutorial will be focusing on reducing that flickering and morphing effect that you see in a lot of these videos. So there actually is a way to really completely remove that effect, but it does come with a cost. So what this video is going to help you do is to find the best kind of compromise for the scene you're making and how you can adjust the settings to kind of get rid of that effect or lessen it. So let me kind of first go through and I'll just show you my settings I'm using for the tutorial, just in case you want to see them. So I'm using three models, the 32, the 16, and the 50s, nothing too crazy there. I try to keep my settings down pretty low for animations, but go ahead, you know, you might just want to use two models. And I have 200 steps. My width and height size is 640 by 512. My clip guidance scale is 50,000. And my cut and batch is at one. I always do this when I'm making videos because this can add a lot of time to your animation. Um, this will not matter. This will not matter. We're just going to ignore the video and then the next one we're going to this is where we're going to make our changes this is animation mode i am currently using 3d animation mode the settings i am going to show you you can use in 2d as well i pretty much always use 3d just because it has the turbo mode so you can render you know two to four times faster now in this is the setting right here for my animation right now the only movement i have this is the settings that control the movement and these are on the last tutorial i did Okay, so I have my translation Z at one. This is the only movement parameter I have entered, and this will move the scene forward at a speed of one, which is fairly low. The variables there are just negative 10 to 10, so I'm just going along at a speed of one. And the FOV, I have it at 60. That's a little bit, the lower you go, the more up close you are and the more kind of 3D it looks. So this could possibly have a small effect on it. Um, by if I moved it down, maybe that help a bit, but this this should be pretty minor. This is basically just your field of view. And so now we're going to get to the two most important things to do this. Now I have my frame scale. The frame scale, what this does is this will guide Disco Diffusion to making the next frame that it makes look more like the, the old frame. So each new frame that it makes, this will tell it the higher this is, it'll tell it to keep it looking like the older frame. And this can be a value between I believe zero and 50,000. I'm not for sure if you can enter zero, but um, so 50,000 is the max. Right now I have this pretty high. And the frame skip step. Now this is at 80%. I have this at max right now. This is pretty much identical to the skip step. So if, you, if you've watched my tutorial on using starting image, if you're familiar with, or if you're familiar with using starting images, this basically acts right here. Like if your frame has 200 keyframes and you're using a starting image, you wanna skip about half of them and then that'll retain part of your last image and it'll also start creating a new image to modify it. So this is really pretty identical to that. Um, it is a little different though because it's doing this to each and every single frame of a video. So when we're just doing one frame, we can kind of customize that. So right now though, I have the set extremely high. Both of these settings actually are really high. And so I'm doing that to kind of show you what this is going to do is it's going to look really good maybe for a few seconds because it's going to keep each frame looking exactly like the old frame. So you will see no flickering or no morphing, but it is going to really start to look bad as it moves forward, even at my slow speed because it's not changing the information enough to kind of keep up with what's in front of it. So as it gets to maybe that mountain was in the distance, it didn't have enough information about that and it's retaining too much of the old keyframe and it's skipping too much. So I'll kind of show you now where this is at. I've already been running it. And here's my video right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and show you the video and show you how it started and show you how we got to this. Okay, so if you notice, the video starts off pretty good, like we can see these kind of caves here, and they stay there as the video goes. But the longer it goes on here, because we have those settings so high, see how it's losing detail, these lines, and it would just continue to get worse from here. Okay, and this is actually from my archives here. I think this was the first time I first tried adjusting this step. So this just kind of shows you the same thing. It starts off good, you know, kind of looking realistic. And then as it goes on, it just turns really bad. So this is the extreme of that setting. 
Okay, so I am going to go ahead and start the run now. Let me first show you my settings though. So I changed it down here. Now I'm kind of changing it down to the opposite end of the spectrum. So I have my frame scale now at 1500, which it says is a good default. That's what it says. Um, and the frame skip steps is 40%. And you might guess I don't think that's a good default. I think it should almost always be at least somewhat higher than that. And I'll show you why here. So we're going to go ahead now and do the run. I have also turned the turbo mode on to three skip steps. That can, that can affect this a bit too, but let's go ahead and do the run now and see how different this looks with our, with our parameters adjusted there. Okay, so our scene is starting now. It's going to go ahead now and render these 200 frames, and I will come back and show you the video when it is done. Okay, and this is the scene that we rendered. So if you notice, it keeps up on detail. It still looks good as you move through, but everything is kind of morphing and just constantly changing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is try and find sort of a middle ground here where we still have some consistency with the video, but it, not so much that it's not rendering new, new items, you know, when we zoom in there. So out of these two settings, the frame skip steps is definitely the more powerful of the two. You really notice when you crank this up or down, it will really it will really make a huge change in your video. So I'm going to try it here first at 60 and I'm going to go up here to about 20,000 and then we'll do a render here and we'll see what this one looks like. Okay, so this one we do still have some flickering, but most of our main objects, if you notice, they're kind of staying, they're keeping their shapes, things like that. There's a little bit of morphing. So this, this is kind of a good middle ground area to work around and we, we could still fine tune it from here as well. Okay, now I'm going to do one final run here. I'm going to try 70, which normally won't work. That'll be too much of a skip step. But I'm going to turn the speed down also to 0.8. So it's not just the forward speed. Like anything coming into your scene, if you're turning right or left, anything like that can cause it to lose detail if you have that too high. Okay, I am starting to run now. Now I will keep my eye on it too. And if it looks like it was just at 70% was causing it to lose too much detail, I'll come in and stop it. For now, I'm going to let it run and see if we've got this fine tuned a little bit more even. Okay, so here is my final run here at 70 skip steps and 40,000. And I do think these are really important settings when you're making video to be aware of. So that's why I kept this kind of separate from the rest of the series. And thank you for watching. There are more tutorials coming.